Okay, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to draw a landscape. There is a packet which is attached to the Google Classroom for this week. So in here you'll see lots of different examples. So just some simple drawings of features that could be used in a landscape. Um, there are also in the resources area um, of Google Classroom, in the tutorials area in the classroom, you'll find additional videos on how to draw trees, mountains, and um, trees, mountains, and cacti. So um, for this piece, I decided to draw it because we're kind of thinking about um, Arizona and nature and the fact we're all stuck at home right now. And when we go back out into nature, it's gonna kind of seem like a completely wild experience because having seen the same few parts of the country for so long, of the state for so long even, so I'm just going to start by drawing um, a kind of uh, Sedona red rock kind of mountains. So that's going to be at the very back of my picture, just like the photograph in the packet. You know, Sedona red rocks are so interesting, the way that there's, there's some of the large mountains and then these kind of unique skinny rock structures that are just there in the middle and they don't really seem like they should still be standing. So I'm using the Autodesk sketchbook for this. Um, if you have a stylus then you could give it a go but otherwise I think you'd be better off just drawing this in pencil and then editing it later on in Autodesk sketchbook. <clears throat> we'll come to that in a later video. So now that I've drawn my three mountains, I'm just gonna try and draw some kind of, I don't know, rocky kind of gravel ascent that holds the mountains to the earth. Working a little bit behind it, a little bit in front of it. Then I'm going to start drawing some, some kind of satellites. This moon shape, asteroid maybe. Notice how I'm turning my paper upside down. That's something you should also consider doing when you are drawing as well. To be able to get that correct angle to draw at. Making this one look kind of more like Jupiter, I suppose. So that's my background done. Now I'm going to start trying to draw some trees in the foreground. For this project, I want there to be at least five elements from nature to make your landscape. So here I am just starting to sketch out the top of the tree. and then where the branches will come out. So I decided at this stage that I'm not particularly happy where, with where the uh, trees are, are. This is the beauty of using a digital drawing program like Autodesk, that um, you can kind of move things around if you're not happy with them. A little bit more frustrating if you're using traditional art methods because then you have to um, erase and redo it. But I shifted them up to an area where I'm a little bit happier with them. 
It gives us more room to play with at the bottom and build out this picture. So now I'm gonna start drawing kind of this twisted, interesting, swirly tree trunk and branches. Just using a lot of curved lines like in nature. Making these kind of gnarled trees to add some wildness to the, to the image. Sides have a tree on either side. Right now, the trees are basically finished going in and adding extra details, lots more curved lines, overlapping lines, working on line quality. All these are like extra things that will make your drawing much more interesting. Some more areas of the branches, sorry, areas of the, of the, of the leaves up above. So it's not just one big flat shape. And then finally the roots. I really love tree roots, just because they look so crazy. Again, just, just like the branches, lots of uh, curved lines. So now I'm gonna add some cacti in there. And one of the things that I, this is the first time I've ever really used Autodesk. So um, I was trying to work out how to draw in different layers. So if you look on the right side of the screen, there is um, the different layers function. So you can add different layers, which is a really great thing about digital art is that you can build a picture up in layers. And I decided after all that drawing and moving around, in fact, I would be much smarter if I had um, moved my trees to a different layer. And the reason that is, is because if I want to go and move things around again, then I can do that. So now drawing again on a different layer, so a layer on top of um, the trees, I'm gonna start drawing my saguaro. And so I turn down the, what's called the opacity of the trees so they're a bit more see-through so I can draw through them a little bit more easily. So I drew that saguaro and then I decided I didn't quite like it. So I went back and erased it. And then I'm adding more back in again here. See how I quick keep uh, referring back to this to the guide because even those little simple sketches that I drew in there are still really helpful to be able to look at. Erasing some of the lines so that each segment looks like it flows into each other. adding some fruit onto the top of the, of the um, pretty pears. Have I been calling these saguaros? They're pretty pears. So see how I turn the opacity back up on the tree? So now I can see which lines I want to get rid of. Lines of the tree that are sticking through the saguaro. And now I'm back drawing on my saguaro layer 
this time I've learned my lesson and start drawing from the bottom the base layer of the um, I keep calling them cigars, the base layer of the prickly pear. So on this one I decided just to make it a little bit more interesting. I wanted to see how I could make the prickly pear kind of creep around the back of the tree. And then after I did that, I realized that I like that way more than the first one. So I've gone back and I'm now erasing these parts of this prickly pear on the left and I'm gonna draw them back in so that they're also creeping around the back of the tree. Art's just gotta be like that sometimes. So I really like it when it's very playful like this, things are peeking out from behind and in front of each other. And the very last thing we're gonna add, which is my fifth element to my um, picture, is a meandering river. So again, just lots of nice curved lines, very similar to the tree branches, it's almost the same technique. And then just taking that up to the mountains in the background and adding lines to show water, to show the movement, and so on and so on. More details on those rocks in the background. So finally, here is an example of my piece on the left and also um, a student piece on the right side. So this is what you should be aiming for in this first step. I look forward to seeing what will you come up with.